Daniel chapter 8, verse 15. We've been talking about this vision of Daniel. I thought it was something funny. I, I was either yesterday or today I read something about Daniel chapter, I think it was 7. And how they try to put the, the dream and the thing to Donald Trump. You ain't going to find Donald Trump in the, in the scriptures. I'm sorry. And it came to pass when I, even I, Daniel, had seen the vision. And sought for the meaning then. So Daniel has his vision. And, and, and the interpretations don't happen right away. I mean, you would think that God said, okay, here, Daniel, or somebody, hey, here's a vision. And you would think there'd be interpretation right away. There's not. I mean, we've got to learn that God is a patient God, and he doesn't wear a wristwatch. And if he were to wear a watch or have a calendar, to him, you know, a, what was it, a thousand days but a moment, something like that. Behold, there stood before me as the appearance of a man. He's not a man. But he's as the appearance of a man. That's an angel. And Daniel doesn't say, oh, he looks like a man. He has his big floppity wings and long blonde hair. And, you know, I've seen Jesus in my toast or any Catholic illusion. And I heard a man's voice between the banks of Uli, or you, however you want to say it, which called and said, Gabriel. See? That's the man that's, that's in verse 15, Gabriel. There's another man that shows up and says, Gabriel. This is the same one that shows up to Mary. And he shows up to uh, John the Baptist's father. Make this man, Daniel, to understand the vision. So he came near where I stood, and when he came, I was afraid. Now, like I said, angels don't have wings. The cherubim do. But there's got to be something in this in this countenance of this man Gabriel, and I don't even know if you really want to, if you can call him a, an angel, but he is. As far as we know, there's only one archangel, and that's Michael. And what we're getting when you read the scriptures and you got the proper Bible, Gabriel's walking up to Daniel, and he's like, oh. Now remember, the angel of the Lord went to, a, to the army of the camp and wiped out almost three quarters of the camp. Two angels in Lot's house blinded the people. There's something about these angels. I mean, the Bible says you entertain angels unaware. You don't even know. But there's just something about this experience of, of Gabriel. He's afraid. Maybe he was taller. Maybe he was huskier than Daniel. I mean, we don't know what these people look like in the Bible. But I guarantee Jesus is not this Gentile American bull. I fell on my face. But he said unto me, Understand, O son of man, expression used by Ezekiel and by Jesus Christ. For at the time of the end, pay attention to the word the end in Daniel, that only points to one period of time, shall be the vision. Again, this vision is future. We are under the authority of, of, of chapter 1, I mean verse 1, uh, 8 verse 1 of Belshazzar. We're going to look at kingdoms further than Babylon. Now as he was speaking with me, I was in deep sleep on, on my face toward the ground. <laughs> I 
I know some preachers, and they get up and start talking. I would fall asleep, not on the ground, but in the pew. Daniel becomes afraid. He drops to his face on the ground, and now he's sleeping. I used to work third shift, and I'd come home, and sometimes the job I had, you don't know what time I was going to get home. My boss usually tried to send me home Sunday mornings early. I, I would take a power nap. The clothes I was in, even my shoes, I would sleep whatever time I get, 10 minutes, maybe an hour if I was lucky. My wife would put my shoes on before she would wake me up and they fell off. And I had a nerd to somebody that you, you, you slept during the service. I went up to the pastor. I said, Pastor, you know, I, I, listen, I'm sorry I, I fall asleep during the service. He says, listen, I'd rather have you be here and sleep than not be here. He says, I know you You come home 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning, 6 in the morning, 7 in the morning by your job. You're here. Daniel, what should you do in the presence of an angel? Come on, if Gabriel had wings and stuff like that, you wouldn't think that Daniel would be sitting there falling asleep. This is not God. This is not the angel of the Lord. This is not Jesus Christ pre-incarnate. This is Gabriel. But you know, the Bible only tells of two angels that are named, Gabriel and Michael. I don't care what the Catholic Church is. I don't care what the Baptist is. There's only two named angels in the Bible. Michael, which is for the nation of Israel, you learn that later in Daniel. And Gabriel, he shows up to Daniel. He shows up to John the Baptist's father, I can never remember his name. And he shows up to Mary, Jewish. So Daniel's asleep. And he touched me. And he set me upright. He had to wake Daniel up. And he said, Behold, I will make thee known what shall be in the last end of the indignation, the tribulation period. Now, the primary thing of this vision, we're going to look at two kings. But we're going to step ahead of these two kings, which are not even in the bat. We're in Belsizer. But the, the main vision is the Antichrist in the tribulation period for a time appointed the end. You gotta mark the end in Daniel. Because that then that the end only represents one period of time. The ram, which thou saw us have two horns. Right, let's look how hard this is now. Ready? Strong hard Bible doctrine. Are kings of Media and Persia. Wow. Ooh. You didn't need a diploma. You needed to study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be shamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. It's already divided for you. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Look. You did not need a scholar. And the kings would be. Their kings, Cyrus and Dyrus. And they're going to come up. Dyrus is going to come up pretty quickly. He's, he's already come up, but we're out of order. In chapter 5, verse 31, Dyrus, when he takes over and conquers Babylon, then Cyrus. So, but here it is. The rough goat, remember he's seen a ram with two horns, and then he sees this rough goat. Ready? Here we go. It's hard again. The king of Grecia. Now I told you last time, that is, though he's mentioned in the scriptures, he's not named. But that's Alexander the Great, Grecia, Greek. There he is.
Doesn't even record both sides. And even when Belshazzar is in reign, Nebuchadnezzar is still in reign, but he's off other lands. And the great horn that's between his eyes, the Rupko, is the first king. Now being broken, Alexander the Great dies of alcoholism in Egypt, whereas four stood up for it. Four stood up for it. And by chance, Alexander the Great had four generals. When Alexander the Great died, his four generals took over, and there's Antiochus, which got Asian Minor in Syria. Caesar, and I'm saying he's wrong, Macedonia in Greece, Ptolemy, he got Egypt, and he's going to come up again. You ought to know Ptolemy, don't you? Because when you talk about this guy in, in, in Egypt, you're also talking about Cleopatra and Mark Anthony. How come you learn about Cleopatra in the schools, but you don't learn about the Bible telling you about these kings? And then Siri Vladis, and you can look up Alexander the Great, four generals, and you see the name. That would be Mesopotamia and Persia itself. Now it's between the eyes is the first king. The first king is, is uh, Alexander the Great. Now, therefore, being broken, he dies. Wherefore, four, four stood up before it. That's his, that's his generals. And four kingdoms, the four kingdoms given to his generals, shall stand up out of the nation. And the nation was Grecia but not in his power. When they receive their power, they're given their strength. Their ruler, their king, the great, is dead. So you got to look at these, these Asian minor, Greece and Macedonia, Egypt, and Mesopotamian Persian areas. Because in latter time of the, their kingdom, we just, just told you, when the transgressors are come to the full, when God is about had it, and their cup is overflowing, a king of fierce conscience, and here comes the Antichrist, With all the study we're doing in Daniel, the Antichrist comes out of one of these nations. Which one? We don't know. We're going to be going to, by the end of Daniel, we can look at different things. <clears throat> so here's the Antichrist. Understanding dark sentences. So we are in a realm of, of the television shows and all the programs. They're just dark and wicked and, and Harry Potter. And, and they got a program I want to put, you know, uh, Lucifer. And that character, no, no afraid to call him Lucifer himself. And just the wickedness. Dark sentences that are in his realm. The church will be gone. Shall stand up. Take his power. And his power shall be mighty. And if you read Daniel, read what Jesus wrote. You read what Paul wrote. You read what the scriptures and you read the book of Revelation. All about this man, and it's not even in the full context. Jesus says at one point, if time would not be shortened during that period, not even the elect shall survive. But God's going to shorten the time. But not by his own power. 
Well, what's that mean? When you go read over in Revelation chapter 13, it says that this devil, the dragon, gives his power to the Antichrist. The false prophet comes along after the Antichrist is killed and gets a bad right arm and a bad right eye, and he comes up resurrected in the imitation of Jesus. And the whole world is like, ooh, and, ah, and, the, and the false prophet sets up an image that speaks. And driving the, the, the Pentecostals in the frenzy of ooh, ha, ha. And the Catholics are happy because they're actually getting real Jewish meat and blood. And all the world stands in awe of the power and mighty. Look at Revelation 13. It's not his power. And then another thing too is 13. God gives him the power. Look at 13, 1, 2, and 3. We've already read many times. Well, we'll look at, we haven't read verse 3 about the Antichrist. I saw one of his heads as it was wounded to death. And he does die. His deadly wound was healed. Deadly wound was healed. Resurrection. And the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon. That's the devil. Which gave power unto the beast. That's the Antichrist. That's what Daniel is saying. And then later on, scripture with scripture, we understand. But with John, okay, now where do we know where the power came from? So, I don't bother with the scholars. I don't mess with that. I, I will look when I'm studying, I primarily look to... Um, Can't think of his name is now. I look to John Wesley, and I look to the G Geneva Bible notes. You say, why do you look at the Geneva Bible notes? Because the Geneva Bible notes upset the Catholic Church, and it upset the world. All the notes in that Bible, they point to the Bible, they point to God, they protect and go to everything that's right. Okay, I'm going to read those. I won't go to a modern version. I go to a modern version only to show you that the modern versions are wrong. Like today I did in the Bible. Jesus wept. Oh, no, he didn't. Not if you got the CEV version. He didn't wept. So, not by his power, John tells us later on by an angel that is of Jesus. The devil, the dragon, gives him the power. Run to two references. And listen, you're not going to get this in your average Baptist church because they're too busy worshiping Esther. They're too busy worshiping Tammuz. They're too busy, oh, you know, we got a fellowship. We got to have more people than that church. We got to have this. We got to have that. We got decoration. We got to have all this. They're not interested in Bible. And their pastors already passed seminary school to get a diploma, and he ain't going to study the Bible or anything else. I know a pastor right now. He pulls out his old messages from last year, the year before. It was funny how last February 14th and this February 14th, the great heart. Man, you could at least change the, the title. And then I called it too, and he got all upset. And well, don't lie. Your typical B Baptist today will not know what we're talking about. This is steak, or for me, this is pork ribs. You know, even though they couldn't have pork back then, but we're under grace. He shall now watch it. He shall destroy wonderfully. 
Do you think, I think I, we went over all the names of the hurricanes last year. They're saying it's going to be even worse. They're saying right now they're predicting this week there's going to be a rash of tornadoes in the center part of America, even down towards even Florida. Texas is on fire. Pretty soon the news will say California will be on fire. My mom in Oregon, where is she? There'll be fires out there. There's been volcanoes. There's a war in the Ukraine right now, Russia. I don't know who, I don't follow the news. This mother sheltered this baby. That always happens. I, I, don't, even, I don't even believe the news. I think you make it up, so I don't even pay attention. I'll listen to missionaries. I support a missionary in Ukraine. When he sends me a prayer letter, I will read it, and I'll get the news from him. And i got a couple Facebook Ukraine missionaries. I'll listen to them over the media. Okay? We've had Chernobyl nuclear uh, meltdown. We had... The, the, the nuclear power plant in Japan with that tsunami. And that tsunami, when you look at the, the, the pictures of those waters, is washing away people and their property. And you look at that and you say, oh my God, the death, the destruction, the agony. The... And you look at what's been happening since 2019. Insurance companies are they're buying handkerchiefs and snot rag in the in the grosses because they're crying, they're upset, all these things they gotta pay. Now they're saying people today that they're all upset because they quit their job <laughs> because they didn't want to get a vaccine. What I'm, I'm saying all that look at all that worldwide. And the Antichrist has said he shall destroy wonderfully. Have you read the book of Revelation? Have you read about the seals? The vials. The trumpets. And the three woes. Those are from God. <clears throat> There's a mighty, powerful thing sent by God. You know what Daniel just told us? While God is judging the world, Satan is, has his own. And the destruction wonderful will be primarily to the Jews. Out of Hitler will be a little, I love you doll. Oh, mommy, hold me. Hold me, mommy. I love you, mommy. That's what out of Hitler is going to be. The Bible says that, that that devil will wait for that child that's a Jewish child to come from that mother's belly to eat him. In the tribulation period, he's actually going to kill Jews and they're going to eat and drink the body and blood of Jews as a practice today of the mass because if you're saying you're going to eat the literal body of Jesus and drink the literal body of blood of Jesus, you're drinking and eating Jewish flesh because Jesus was a Jew. Though the Catholic photographers before cameras were even around Picture him different. Destroy wonderfully the fact is that Jesus says to the Jewish people, you mothers, will be you that has a, a, a baby in the womb and will be to you that you have a baby in your breasts. Because that child is going to need food, that child is going to need health care, and there's only one way you're going to get it. The Bible said, Except you receive the mark, you will not eat, you will not buy, you will not sell. I don't care what the movies say. I don't care what Christians say. You're not going to come up with an artificial mark. You get that mark or you're not going to get any care. Now, there will be Jews that will be helped by nations. And I guarantee if the Antichrist finds out that you are helping those Jews, you're not going to be in a good place. That shall destroy wonderfully. And with that, shall prosper. The whole world is going to be naive. We're being destroyed. We're being conquered. We're being... 
Isn't he a great leader? Where do you get that from? You get that in the book of, of Exodus. The, the children of Israel serve Pharaoh with rigor. And they're in the wilderness. Let's go back. We remember the cucumbers and the onions. And the leeks. That's not a dinner. Those are things you use to make a dinner. Well, again, you can't have pork. Where's the steak? With the onions and the mushroom. They didn't mention steak, did they? They didn't even mention fish. But Pharaoh was so good, they wanted to go back to Pharaoh and not to God. Meanwhile, what they forgot was Pharaoh was killing their babies. Does that sound like the, the, the Antichrist? Hey, in America today, what does it matter about babies? It's legal. Go to a clinic and get the baby killed out of your belly. They got it now today. You can give birth to that baby and kill that baby. Yeah. Okay, they're making it hard to go to the to the to the clinic. You can take medication and it will kill the baby in you. That's what the Antichrist is going to go do. They're, they're emptying the jails because we can't afford it no more. Well, the world told Pilate, we'll take the insurrection, we'll take the murderer, we'll take the thief, put him on in, in the Oval Office as, as Donald Trump, and the man who tells the truth, the man who's a spokesman for God, the man that helped us, the man that healed us, the man that listened to us, the man that prayed for us, put him on the cross. And Jesus said, Him that comes in his own name, him you will see. He shall prosper. So I would assume in America he will be a Republican. And practice. Practice? Do you know what Adolf Hitler and the Nazi party was doing with the Jews, some of them? They were doing medical experimentation. You know what they were doing to our soldiers over in the Orient, uh, in Korea, and Vietnam, and World War II? You know what they were doing to them when they were POW? They were experimenting with them. Let's see how far, how much pain they can take. Let's see how much they can take not eating. And they were recording the facts. This was done by the Nazis. This was done by, by in World War II. This was done in Korea and Vietnam. I have been told by story of horror by men I knew, Viet, uh, veterans of Vietnam. Practice. You know what they call a doctor? He's in practice. He may be Dr. Antichrist. And it shall destroy the mighty. America, we got the greatest military. We got the seals. We got the, the, the penguins. We got the, the whatever we got. We got it. We got the nukes. And the Antichrist is going to destroy your mighty. And look, the holy people. Who's that? That's not Christians. Jesus Christ hasn't even been born yet. That's Jews. The Antichrist is going to be out to destroy those Jews like Adolf Hitler did. Russia told the Jews, get out. Many, world, many of the nations of this world has told the Jew, get out of here. Or tortured them. Through his policy, and that's a famous word in the media today, policy. Also, he shall cause the craft to prosper in his hand. In the book of Acts, there are men who work for Diana. 
They are craftsmen of Diana. And they got highly upset when Paul came preaching about Jesus. Oh, you don't think it's so? You, you come on down Daytona Beach, Florida. You go down to Mongolia Avenue and say, what do you think of that preacher that comes here Saturday morning during your flea market, I mean your farmer's market. What do you think about that preacher? They'll give you some good choice worldly words. Last time I was there, when I, when I closed it, a couple of them told me, I wish you dropped dead. I wish you died. The prosperity of those and their crafts, craftsmen, is going to be they have the mark, they can work, they can prosper, and they're all doing it through the permission of Antichrist. Listen, the American government is setting you up. You can't build your child a little playhouse without the government telling you so. You need a permit. Well, that mark on your forehead, that mark on your right hand is your permit. See, America is just one more step away from the Antichrist. The only thing that's going to happen for America and the Antichrist is the Christians go bye-bye. And he shall magnify, make more important, make, you know, magnify God, himself in his heart, pride. I'm going to tell you who a representative of this. He is not the Antichrist. I'm going to tell you the perfect representation of this. Don't you dare tell, oh, Stalin said that Donald Trump is the Antichrist. I, I did not say that, but Donald Trump sure fits in. That man is so prideful. That man is so arrogant. And when he mentions the name Jesus and holds an upside down Bible in front of a church sign, all the Christ oh, great! It's, it's Jesus Christ is come. You fools! He didn't write that. The people that, that write his speeches wrote that. They sit in a room, Coca-Cola and cigarette smoke. Okay, how can we please the people? Well, you know, he's got Christians over there. All right, let's put Jesus in there. You know, you made fun of, of, of Obama and his teleprompter. Donald Trump had his own teleprompter. And whether it be a, 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 a TV screen or... It was paper. And by peace shall destroy many. That first horseman of the apocalypse come. He has a bow, but he has no arrows. That's peace. Then what follows is famine, war, death, and hell. Oh, excuse me, if you got the CE Bible, there is no hell, it's death. I've I done it. When, when, when I'm ready to publish the CEB Bible on PowerPoint, you can watch and see where they eliminated hell and called it death. Friend, that's a Jehovah Witness doctrine. You know what the world wants? They want peace. You know who's going to give them peace? The Antichrist. You know what fat man goes all over the world? And when he lands in the land, he bends over and kisses the dirt. Peace be unto you. Peace be unto you. Peace unto you. That guy's the biggest liar ever. You know what the Inquisition was? Was his church killing Bible Christians. You know that guy, if I walked up to that fat pope and said, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and I shall be saved or you're going to go to hell. That guy wouldn't say, Peace be unto you. He would say, Lock him up. 
And you know what the world will say? Yeah, lock them up. Lock the fanatic up. Don't believe me? Come on down Daytona Beach. You want to know how many times I was threatened to be arrested? I was on the phone one day with my lawyer and the police. And that cop told me and my lawyer on the phone, and beside the fact with the law state, if he says one more word, he's going to jail. My lawyer said, it's up to you, Stiley. If you go to jail, you give me a call, I'll represent you. The world's ready for the Antichrist. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes. Now we're going to run to that P. Do you see that capital P in princes of princes? I hope you have a King James Bible. Because we're going to run into that prince of princes again, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. Wait a minute. You don't think, you don't think the Antichrist is going to go up against Jesus? You don't think that's possible? If thou be the Son of God, turn these rocks into bread. If thou be the Son of God, uh, all this I will give to you if you just fall down and worship me. The devil's already tried to get Jesus Christ. That was 40 days of no food and no water. This time the entire world is on his side. But he shall be broken without hand. Well, where'd you see that? That was back with Daniel what, chapter 2, was it? That rock that's uncut comes and breaks the images in pieces. If you read Jesus Christ when he comes back, it ain't the hands of Jesus. It's that fire. It's that sword that comes out of his mouth. The very mouth said to let there be light. That mouth is going to say, put chains on that bean right there and cast him into hell for a thousand years. Gave your brother trumpet. Let's go. And I, I know I know it's he's all broken today. Oh, smutty face, I'm gonna shoot him with a water gun. I swear to God, I heard I, he's saying all the day. Oh smutty face. <laughs> I hear Christians all the time, and I don't know if it's right or wrong. You know, I, I go in and I, I take the Bible, I take the prayer. Again. I don't even want to mess with the devil. I, I, the devil come up to me, hey, what about that sin? And it's like, man, you take it up with God because I put it under the blood. Even Michael didn't contend with the devil over Moses, but I don't want to mess with the devil. Job says you do battle with him. I have done battle with the devil. And don't do it again. Okay, very fine. Learned my lesson. And the vision of the evening in the morning, which was told is true. God won't lie to you. Wherefore, shut thou up the vision. A modern ver version would be, shut up. But that's not what he's saying. Shut thou up. You know, this vision can only be opened. And some believe that little book of Revelation is the book we're talking about now. You cannot reveal what that Antichrist is going to be until you actually live it. I mean, I mean, listen, if you read the Bibles, it's there. How could Noah explain rain to the people when it never rained ever until the day that door that ark shut? How can I explain the Antichrist? I, I got representations of Stalin and, and Adolf Hitler, but then they are pussycats. You know, and also another thing too is realize it's funny because everybody uses him as what if Adolf out, out, out Hitler, what if he believed in his heart that Jesus Christ saved his soul while he was living or before he died? 
That's never going to happen to Antichrist. I believe that. I believe anybody could be saved. I can believe it. If Adolf Hitler called upon the name of the Lord Jesus before he died, that man's in heaven just as much as I'm going to go to heaven. But it shall be for many days. Oh, yes, Lord, many days. <laughs> this was written back in B.C. I think I, I think Alexander the Great was B.C. I'm not, I'm not too up on dates. And I, Daniel, fainted. <laughs> he's got a great, he's got a great thing. When it was revealed to Daniel exactly what his vision was, his his reaction was <laughs> boing. Because you're talking about Daniel's people. Daniel has the, the, the longest prayer for the people outside of Solomon. And to tell Daniel and Solomon what's going to happen to the people would break their heart as much as David. And today the church just takes it so lightly. And they even, freak, oh, the book of Revelation, and they even make it sound like maybe it's us Christians. Oh, the book of Revelation, the book of Revelation. And how many churches went to the book of Revelation after this thing with this COVID-19? Well, do you know the book of Revelation is not about the Christian? Do you know some churches have Bibles out there that are not King James? It's written to the Christian. Mark 16 is eliminated from verse 9 on out of their Bible. And it says, go to all the world and preach the gospel. Now, what's the book of Revelation supposed to do for you? Make it, I don't want my mama to go into that. I don't want my dad to go. I don't want my children to go through that. I don't want my brothers and sisters to go. I don't want my workers to go through that. If the Lord came today, that's what they're going to face. I better get out there and tell them about the gospel. Daniel fainted. The church fainted. Uh, I gotta wear a mask six feet, close the church doors. And I keep reading that it's destroyed the church as a meeting place, meeting place. And was six certain days. The message he had. What it was all about made him sick. And I guarantee he probably could even write more because he was told to shut it up. John was about to write in the book of Revelation here. No, 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 no. Don't you say nothing about what you just heard. Stop it. Erase that. You know the Apostle John stood in the book of Revelation at the awe of Mystery Babylon and said, oh, what on earth? And this is the guy that grew up during Nero. This is the guy who's on the island of Patmos for the word of God. This is the guy that's been put into boiling liquid for Jesus. And he looks at that Mystery Babylon, that woman, and says, oh, <laughs> Uh, Jesus? Yes, John? Is that going to happen when, I'm, when I get back? Is that going to happen during my time? Not really. You know you're going to be raptured before that. Thank you, Lord. Daniel's got the same reaction. Afterward, I rose up. And did the king's business, Belshazzar. And I was astonished. I was a stone at the vision. Watch this. Now he's been told, but I not understood it. You imagine how Daniel would have felt and would have had if he completely understood the work of the Antichrist.
Yeah, I mean, it, 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 the rapture. Because no matter what, whether you die or you're alive, Christians are going up in the rapture. You better thank God that God saved your soul and you're not going to go through that mess. 